raising the IQ and bankrolls of sports bettors everywhere. The Better IQ Podcast is your source for sports betting information, analysis, and opinions. Learn. Bet. Win. Better IQ. Hey, good afternoon, and welcome to the Better IQ Podcast, the Friday show. You know what that means. It means NFL. We got week 15 as the uh, regular season uh, comes to an end. I saw a very entertaining uh, game uh, last night with uh, the uh, Chargers uh, getting the uh, win over the uh, Kansas City Chiefs. I know a lot of uh, implications in terms of seeding and uh, whatnot uh, for uh, both uh, teams. And, of course, that's the uh, theme we've been talking about. We talked about it early in the uh, week. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, positioning for the postseason, must-win games, things of uh, that uh, nature. But uh, uh, we'll roll through the entire card. We'll lead it off uh, with uh, Eric Waz. We'll close it out with uh, Aaron Renning. Uh, let's get right to it. Let's welcome in our first guest, Eric Waz. Waz, how are you this afternoon? I'm doing great, Andrew. Excited to talk some NFL today and break down the top half of the card here. And uh, just want to reiterate, we talked about it Monday, but man, our guys in NFL have been in really good form all season long. All four of our guys, uh, 33 and 18 against the spread for our best bets in NFL, including 4-0 and last weekend. So I'm excited. I mean, everybody's winning money. Our clients are happy. So I encourage everybody listening. If you're not getting in on our best bets for NFL, you're definitely missing out this season. So we still got three weeks left in the regular season. And uh, for me personally, I generally do better late in the season than I do any other point in the season. So I'm really excited because uh, I've had some really strong finishes, including in some of the contests around town, the super contests. I've won the uh, the mini contest, which is the last three weeks of the season uh, twice. Uh, I think one year I was 14 and one to close out the contest. So uh, I got a lot of data to work with and there's a lot of situational type angles that, that kind of play in here down the stretch that you don't see any other point during the season. So, uh, so yeah, definitely a, a good week to, to get in on the action. <laughs> what are situational angles for Saturday NFL games? What's the deal with that, Waz? Is it just <laughs> Not much con- going out with those games, unfortunately. Yeah. I, 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 did it happen? Is, is this a reoccurring theme? Have they been doing this in past seasons? Yeah, they've had Saturday games for sure late in the season. But, you know, they they these are booked well in advance. So, you know. Obviously, looking at these games, they're not going to be the two of the more exciting games of the week. You wish you could, have, you know, flip these out for something else like you do with the Sunday night game and flex it out. But uh, with travel and whatnot and having a short week, they're not able to do that. So these aren't going to be uh, two games I'm going to be too excited about to tune in for. All right, let's talk about the uh, first of uh, two here for us Saturday. Houston, uh, the uh, Texans were uh, rolling, and uh, we talked about it, the ebb and flow, and uh, ran into a little bit of a buzzsaw. The Colts were sitting on a, a really good uh, effort, and it panned out. Colts were coming in off a, a shutout uh, last week, and they end up uh, beating uh, Houston uh, outright now. Uh, Houston on the uh, road, they head to New York, taking on the uh, Jets. Uh, Texans open seven. Um, Steven's still out there, seven even money. A couple of shops have moved. I'm looking at, you know, Heritage, Canner. They've moved to six and a half here a while. This total getting played up a little bit as we uh, speak. Open 42 and a half, up to uh, 43 and a half. What are your thoughts? So we've talked about many times in the podcast this season about Houston. They, they had the, obviously the, the, the rough start 0 3. Expectations were high. They finally got rolling, got clicking, re- reeled off nine wins in a row, but. As we broke those games down each week, you know, a lot of phony winners in there, right? They could have easily went six and three or seven and two in those those nine games, maybe even five and four. I mean, there's games in there that they really got outplayed and were able to win. So if I may come back down to earth last week, the Colts really dominated that game. They only won by three, but they were in control the whole way, uh, especially from a yard standpoint. So I, Houston, I don't know. I, I still don't value them as highly as I do as, as the rest of the market does. I still think they're a little bit overrated. Um, and this is a lot of points to lay in the road, you know, and, and obviously the jets, you know, jets aren't playing for anything. Uh, you know, they, they've had a rough year, but uh, you know, they got Darnold back last week. He's a huge upgrade over McCown. I mean, McCown, you know, can't really make plays. Um, you know, Darnold, he's, he's inconsistent, but you know, he, he, he's good enough to win this game for him. If he plays a great game and, uh, I don't really have a play on this personally. I think the way to go this one, if you want to get a little uh, adventurous, is maybe to go Jets money line. Uh, I just don't think the points in this game are going to really matter. And you can get you know 260, 270 out there right now with the Jets. I may go that direction if it gets a little higher here, but uh, with this point spread is that I'm, I'm staying away. 
Second game on uh, Saturday, Cleveland in Denver. Uh, Cleveland 5-7-1, Denver 6-7. and seven. In theory, at least uh, uh, back when I checked earlier this week, these two teams uh, statistically, the probability isn't high, but statistically they, they are still live here for the uh, postseason, of course being in that uh, weaker uh, AFC. But uh, Denver open three. Uh, those threes are now gone here, uh, Waz. you got Denver offshore, two and a half across the uh, board, uh, total clicking upwards to 45 and a half. I'm definitely not surprised that the money's been going in Cleveland's direction here. I mean, they've played really good football since, you know, they had the coaching uh, overhaul and get rid of Hugh Jackson, and that's not a surprise. I mean, he was he was really uh, not a good play caller, some interesting decisions in games, didn't make second-half adjustments, and they've been great since then. Uh, I've got Cleveland rated pretty highly now, and uh, to be honest, I mean, Denver's a team where – I just haven't understood why the market has given them so much credit uh, from a coaching standpoint. They're one of the worst coaching staffs in the league. Uh, they let several games slip away. Uh, so the three points going off the board wasn't a surprise to me at all. I, I look at the injury report a little bit in this game, and you see uh, you know, the Broncos have some guys out that, that nothing big where you have to worry about it too much. Um, but – um, I'm definitely on the Cleveland side here, and I think I think they can win this game outright. Another game where I probably look at the money line uh, a little bit closer. It's not a huge money line, but you can get you know a buck twenty five, a buck thirty out there. Um, that's probably the way I'll go this week, Andrew. Over to uh, Sunday, Miami and uh, Minnesota. News out of uh, Vikings uh, camp. Offensive coordinator, uh, kind of an odd situation. You know, late season, uh, he gets uh, shown the uh, door. And, um, you know, there, there was some talk, and I don't necessarily buy into it, uh, Waz, but they were passing too much. You know, that, that, that's always the excuse when you're not playing good football where a coach will say, oh, we, you know, we got to get back to old school, uh, you know, run the football, control the clock. That's not the NFL. That's not how you succeed in the NFL. So, I, like I said, I don't necessarily agree with that, uh, that concept. But, uh, nevertheless, uh, Minnesota gets rid of their offensive uh, coordinator, uh, how's it going to impact this game? They are taking money, however. This one opened seven. Uh, Vikings now seven and a half across the board offshore, 44 and a half, 45 the total. I, I think it might help them a little bit, honestly. I think they this team needs a shakeup of some sort. I think they're kind of just looking for a catalyst, looking for something to, to hang their hats on. It's been a tough season for them. They've really underachieved uh, you know, the whole season. Uh, but a lot of their struggles have been on the road. So this, this game kind of sets up well for them. Um, you got Miami coming in off the miracle win last week uh, against the Patriots in the last play of the game, a game that they could have easily lost. Uh, the week before that, they played the Bills at home again, beat the Bills 21-17 in a game they didn't deserve to win at all. They definitely should have lost that game as well. So um, it should be more like, you know, if you look at it, they start out 3-0 this season, now they're 7-6. and I mean, they could have easily at this point only have like four or five wins. But they've been fortunate. Uh, and then you have Minnesota looking to the other end of the spectrum. Uh, you know, a couple games they let slip away as well. Um, they didn't play well the last two weeks, though. I mean, New England and Seattle on the road. Um, really got manhandled in both games, but they've been a much better home team this year. They're four and two at home. Uh, Miami, after getting a home win early on in the season, has lost five straight on the road. So I think a big a big home field advantage here for the Vikings uh, it sets up well. Like I said, you know Minnesota needing a win here. They played a little bit two bad games in a row, not to par. You know, fire the OC. See if you can fire up the offensive unit. Uh, we know the defense is legit. I don't have any uh, question they're going to be able to shut down. Miami offensively, we got Tannehill still a little banged up. He's still limited in practice with the shoulder and ankle injury. Uh, I know Kenyon Drake uh, is kind of banged up. He didn't practice, uh, or he was a limited participant, I think, on Wednesday. Devontae Parker as well. Um, you know, Amendola is still missing practice. So, you know, they still have a lot of injuries here on, on Miami's side, and I just think this one sets up well. The Vikings are pretty healthy. Um, and this is this game is their season, really, to be honest. If they don't win this game, um, they're probably on the outside looking in as far as the playoffs uh, once we get into January. So a must-win game here for Minnesota, and I think we see a good effort from them this week. Oakland and uh, Cincinnati, and uh, boy, uh, we know where Oakland's status is in the uh, betting market. I think this game, this point spread speaks volume. You have an Oakland team that is about as toxic an environment. Uh, granted, they've covered two straight games. I know you talk about that, uh, Waz, but uh, you know the bottom of the barrel – in the NFL, but this speaks to what the markets think about Cincinnati. You have Oakland traveling east for an early start game. They're three and ten. They're playing for exercise. Both teams are playing for exercise. But to see the Bengals, um, you know, open three and a half, and now it's three. 
uh, again, um, speaks to, like I said, how you know low the uh, the markets have downgraded uh, the uh, Bengals over the course of the last uh, few uh, weeks. So three, three fifteen, three twenty here was forty six, forty five and a half the uh, total. How do we approach this one? Yeah, I mean, lines makers and the and the betting public is basically saying that these two teams are even on neutral field. You know, you get the three points for home field advantage, roughly. Uh, this game opened three and a half and down to three, and I, I, I kind of agree with the move here. I, I do think that Cincinnati and Oakland, you know, have kind of flip-flopped. I mean, obviously, Cincinnati got off that great start. I think they're, what, Andrew Four and one to start the season. We were talking about them being maybe one of the better teams in the AFC, possibly, and since then, they've just absolutely fallen apart. Lost some bad games to some bad teams. And I think, you know, from a power rating perspective, they might be, you know, number 32, the last in the NFL. Uh, we know Oakland's played better, uh, two and two in their last four. Uh, I think they've covered three of those four games. Uh, they beat Arizona. They beat Pittsburgh. Uh, and they hung in there with the Chiefs. So, you know, uh, it's hard to make a case here for Cincinnati. They got the backup quarterback in there, Driscoll. He hasn't looked good. He's not a thrower. He's not much of a thrower at all. Uh, I'm surprised he's not scrambling more. They are handing the ball off a lot to Mixon. He had a really good game uh, last week. So um, I think an interesting way to maybe play this game, I don't do this often. Um, I don't really know, you know, we know the Bengals have a bad defense. We know the Oakland's offense isn't great. I'm not sure how many points Oakland's going to score in this game, but Cincinnati, I have a really hard time believing they're going to score many points in this game. So I kind of like playing Cincinnati team total under it's 24 and a half at Pinnacle, and I know not every place is going to have that bet out there. Um, so it's not something I'm going to release out as, a, as an official play to clients. But uh, 24 and a half, I'm going to be a little surprised if they get over that total. Not sure if they'll win the game or if they'll be able to hold Oakland down. Uh, I think it'll be a tight game, but uh, that's the way I'm going to look in this one, Andrew. Tampa Bay and uh, Baltimore, and uh, you've talked about it, Waz, but you eliminate that turnover margin uh, with the uh, Tampa Bay currently uh, minus 17 and. Uh, Outside of that, look, every team has its flaws. You can't completely ignore uh, this team. You know they don't force turnovers and they're loose with the uh, the football. But outside of that, you've mentioned multiple uh, times that uh, uh, Tampa Bay does have some uh, positives. Uh, Baltimore uh, looks like Flacco's healthy, but they're going to go with uh, Jackson. Baltimore opened eight, uh, seven with Juice at Chris, seven and a half elsewhere offshore. Was forty six and a half the total. I'm really surprised they're, they're sticking with Lamar Jackson, to be honest. Um, I really think Joe Flacco, I mean, they're in the playoff push here. There's three weeks left. They've got to win at least two of those three games to get in the playoffs and maybe all of them. And to count on the youngster, I know he's played well, you know, and they've, they've played well with him in the lineup. Uh, you know, they could could be 3-0, and or could be 4-0, and sorry. He, he won the first three games, and they, they went to overtime against the Chiefs last week. But he's just not, you know, he's not a passer. He, you know, let's go through his total passing yards those four games. 150, 178, 125, and 147 in an overtime game. I mean, that's, it's really hard to win the NFL with those kind of passing totals. I mean, obviously he can run the ball. And we know he can, he's capable of rushing for 100 yards. So he makes up for some of it there. He can make some plays and he's exciting. And he does a lot of things that Flacco can't do, obviously. But there's also a lot of things Flacco can do that, that Jackson can't. And one of those is being able to throw down field. And we have Tampa Bay with one of the worst secondaries in football. We know their defense is a total mess. Um, Jackson's not going to be able to take advantage of that as much as as much as Flacco can. And there's some big injuries this week in this one, Andrew. Uh, Jason Pierre-Paul and Gerald McCoy on, on defensive line are banged up for Tampa Bay. And then the Ravens, on the flip side, their secondary is really beat up. they got three guys who almost practiced this week. Uh, you know, their defense is kind of in shambles and we know we know Tampa Bay is getting up a ton of yards and a ton of points all season. So um I actually think this one's gonna be kind of a shootout. I like the over in this one and I actually think Tampa Bay can keep this one close. I mean they they really I think in my mind are underrated. They got one of the top ten offenses in the league. Uh Baltimore coming off of a tough overtime game. There's some data behind playing against teams who play an overtime game the week before, especially late in the season. Doesn't sound like a big deal, but it is when you play an extra 20% of the game. Uh, so that that works in your favor as well. So uh, Tampa and the over is the way I like this one, Andrew. Dallas, I'm to uh, Indianapolis. We uh, talked earlier, the uh, Colts uh, coming up with a uh, big win uh, last week against Houston, and uh, the uh, market all of a sudden liking the uh, Colts. Is this one open two and a half? Uh, now up to uh, three. Maybe they dislike uh, Dallas. What's your uh, take, your angle here, uh, Waz? Three minus 15, uh, the uh, prevailing number here for uh, Indy, 47 the total. Yeah, this is just a game where I think, I know a lot of sharp guys are on Indianapolis here, but this is just a game where I think the line's 
spot on. My model has it spot on um, from a situational standpoint, how these teams are playing. I think it makes sense. I mean, both teams are playing their best football of the season right now. You have the Cowboys come in with five straight wins. Uh, we know the Colts are obviously red hot as well. They've won, what, like six or seven, I think. So uh, two teams in good form. And, you know, I think from a power rank perspective, I have these teams about even. And you factor in the home field three points and, and there you are at the number. So no opinion for me either way. Um, I, the under to me, it looks like it could be possibly a good play. Um, I didn't play it yet, um, but it's up at 47, 47 and a half everywhere. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, Dallas has some injuries on the offensive line. They, one of their guards is out for the game. Obviously they've had their center out all year. So, you know, they may not be able to run the ball like they usually do in this game. And uh, the Colts defense actually is, you know, it's played better than a lot better than they did early on in the season. So um, if anything here, I'll be on the under for a small bet, but uh, I'm not touching the side here. Earlier this morning, uh, Waz, we saw a little bit of a uh, push here on uh, Buffalo. It was one, one and a half, two, uh, now up to uh, two and a half. No threes, but uh, support here for the uh, Bills as they play host to the uh, Lions. Uh, total open 38, seen a little bit of upward pressure, nothing significant, no 40, oh, I shouldn't say that, there's a 40 uh, under 13 at Chris, 39 and a half elsewhere, uh, what do we got with this uh, playing for exercise game wise? Well, I came into this matchup wanting to play the under and before the numbers came out, I thought I'd have a decent bet on the under and they released it and it's 38, which is about uh, less than a point off of where I made it. So I didn't make a bet. And I was climbing up and I see it at 39 and a half. Uh, there's even a 40 out there right now. So I may end up playing it under if it keeps moving up. But uh, I don't see, think we'll see much offense here. And, and Stafford really, surprisingly, you know, in today's NFL, we see all these guys throwing for all these passing yards all over the field and, you know, guys breaking records. He's had a down year when you compare it to, to prior years for him. They're not throwing the balls much, not, not as effectively. They focus more on the running game, which Patricia, when he came in, said that was going to be a, a focal point. Uh, maybe, maybe to their detriment, though. They've done a little too much. Um, I think they're a better offense when Stafford's, you know, slinging the ball over the field. Uh, he's been a little banged up in recent weeks, and you know, I don't know if he's 100, percent but he had a terrible game last week against Arizona. He threw for 101 yards, which I've got to guess that's his all-time low uh, at any level. So uh, I really can't get involved with Detroit, Buffalo. I think the market's on to this team. They've been playing a lot better lately. Um, you know, they really should have beat the Jets last week. They're in control of that game most of the way. The week before, they played in Miami. They lost 21-17. They outplayed Miami. That game should have been an easy winner for them. And then they won the two games before that against Jacksonville and the Jets. So they should be on a four-game winning streak right now, the Bills. And if they're on a four-game winning streak, this line is probably a little higher. You're definitely going to see some threes and threes and a half, three and a halves out there. So, uh, you know, from that standpoint, I guess I lean towards the Bills, uh, but no play for me on this one. Last game here, uh, Waz, the market saying Aaron Rodgers in a must-win situation. Uh, sign us up as the uh, Bears open six and a half, down to uh, five and a half here. Weather, I didn't check the weather of the previous games, but the weather here, I happen to look, uh, looks pretty balmy uh, for this time of year in uh, Chicago. No wind and uh, temperature is going to be in the uh, low to uh, mid-40s, uh, so no issues uh, there. This total has clicked down uh, 45, as mentioned, Bears laying five and a half. couple of sixes out there, Waz. Yeah, I remember this. These teams played back in Week One, and the Bears went to the fourth quarter with a twenty to three lead. End up walking away with a twenty four twenty three loss. Aaron Rodgers, if you remember, Andrew uh, got hurt right before the half, and uh, there were some big question marks whether he's going to come back into the game or not because the Bears were just dominating and they were getting a ton of pressure on Aaron Rodgers. So uh, the sentiment was that he might not come back in the game, and of course he comes back and looks like Superman in the fourth quarter and leads him to victory. You got to think the Bears have that, you know, front of their mind, remembering that game. Uh, you know, I'm not a big revenge angle type guy in the NFL. I don't think I think for the most Parts nonsense, and these teams are trying their hardest every game, not thinking too much about what happened in the past. But in particular, if you're from Chicago like I am, you know that Bears Packers rivalry is huge. They're the two biggest games every season. When they play the Packers, they circle those games immediately. It does not sitting well with the Bears how that game played out. I think they're going to be fired up for this one. But if you look at the way to play this game, I really think that the way to play it is the Bears in the first half, not the full game. They've let some games slip away uh, late as far as the point spread cover. Um, and they, but in the first half, they've been dominant. Um, I think they've covered, Andrew, eight first halves in a row, the Bears. Uh, in the second half, they've been kind of lackluster. And, and I'm not exactly sure the reasons why. I think part of it is 
Nagy's a great play caller. He's great at, you know, kind of putting together that script in the first quarter for the offense. Trubisky um, they had some nice drives here in the first quarter. The defense, too, I mean, they come out firing. I mean, they have a lot of high motor guys, high energy guys on the Bears front seven. And those guys just expend a ton of energy, I think, in the in the first half of the game. By the second half, they're a little more worn out, and you know you need the secondary to step up for you. And they don't have the best secondary. Their secondary solid, um, but uh, and there's a little banged up on the secondary as well. Callahan, their nickel guy, uh, is nicked up. He's going to miss, I think, the rest of the season here. Definitely this game. So, um, so I really think if you're going to look at the Bears here, they've been a first half team all year. And you, if you want to play and get kind of greedy, you can play Bears first half. If they're up at the half, let's say ten points or something come back in with Green Bay second half because uh, you've seen that pattern happen all year long. We know Rodgers is capable of, hey, if the Bears are up 10, you know, three minutes left in the game, the Packers have the ball. I want to put a pretty high probability on the Packers getting in the end zone. So you can see that easily the Bears win this game by three. So I like Bears first half here and uh, possibly, depending on game situation, uh, the Packers in the second half. Pretty amazing. Statistically, statistically, the Bears have 25 interceptions. Was 25. Wow. Yeah, a lot. Uh, yeah, well in the lead of the NFL. And on the flip side, how many interceptions do you think Green Bay has on offense this year? Oh, not not many. Two. <laughs> Two. Yeah, yeah. It's that. I mean, Rodgers doesn't throw interceptions. I mean, it's he's really good at you know getting the ball to the right guy, the guy that's open. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if he throws one though. The Bear. I mean, they're going to get a lot of pressure on him. They're going to be in his face. You know, you could see one here, but I wouldn't count on it, obviously. And I don't think they need to get one. I mean, the Packers. You know, they haven't been a good team here down you know, down the stretch and you know, it's Aaron Rodgers and a bunch of misfits and you know, without him they're they're probably the worst team in the NFC or one of the worst teams in the NFC. So uh yeah, the Bears, I mean they've been very advantageous to taking advantage of, of, of mistakes on other teams and uh you know, I'm sure that'll continue going into the postseason here. Yeah, we talked earlier about best bets. You got multiple options for those uh, best bets. First of all, the uh, records this uh, year, both in college and pro. In the NFL this year, this is better IQ. Uh, documented record, all of our best bets, 33 and 18, that's 65%. College, uh, we've done 40 and 24, that's 63%. So uh, with those best bets, two options. You can get the combo pack here for this weekend, get all four NFL best bets uh, for uh, $99. Uh, and uh, you can also get the uh, college football uh, special bowl best bet uh, package combo, whatever you want to call it. Get every single uh, best bet selection uh, throughout the uh, bowl season from all of the uh, Better IQ uh, handicappers, just one ninety nine. Also, those best bets you can pick those up individually, but the more you get, uh, the more you uh, save. Uh, check out check out all those uh, options that are available on the uh, front page of BetterIQ.com. If you have any questions, uh, call us up at one eight six six nine two three eight eight six seven. We'll get you account set up and get you good to go with some of our uh, top plays here for uh, this weekend and uh, beyond. All right, let's transition to our next guest and uh, wrap up the uh, NFL Week 15 card with Aaron Renning. ER, how are you this afternoon? Well, I'm doing great, Andrew. Glad to be here, ready to break down some NFL. A really good week last week, hoping to duplicate that. Didn't have a ton of volume on this week's card. Last week, I had played just a ton of totals. I thought there were some really good side plays uh, this week, so uh, we'll see how it works out. I think we'll talk about one of those uh, right away in the in the first game we're going to talk about here, Andrew. Yeah, that being uh, Tennessee as they head to uh, New York and uh, Beckham, Odell Beckham, uh, officially uh, listed as uh, out. This line, this uh, point spread has been going all across the board. Aaron, you and I talked off air and mentioned that the Giants earlier in the week were as high as three at a couple of uh, shops earlier this morning. It was plus one, or, uh, one and a half. Uh, this one now down to uh, pick them again, uh, moving off that news of uh, Beckham uh, being out. Uh, total settling in, 43-and-a-half here, uh, uh, ER. Uh, what's your approach here to this uh, this game? Well, I tell you what, it was certainly hard for me to fathom uh, that the Giants could be a three-point favorite over Tennessee. I still just have a hard time buying in uh, to this Giants team. Give them credit uh, for winning four or five games and obviously playing much different football uh, than they did uh, to start the uh, campaign, arguably five straight uh, spread covers for this team right now uh, as well. Uh, but, you know, the the one win I'll certainly give them credit for was that win over the Chicago Bears. They beat them in overtime, although it obviously got dicey in the end. They win that game 30-27 to 27. still. Uh, we're out game by 38 yards on a per-play basis. Uh, that was about a draw. Last week's win against Washington, I mean, certainly 
um, nice job in picking up 40 to nothing. But that Washington team's uh, absolutely in the tank. They look good against Philadelphia uh, that previous week. But before that, it's still been a very choppy team. Uh, the loss to me of Beckham uh, really hurts this offense to be uh, dynamic. They can load up on Barkley at the running back position. Giants, from a defensive standpoint, boy, uh, remember they had traded Snacks Harrison uh, right at the trade deadline. That's really going to hurt them in this matchup uh, against Tennessee. Uh, Lana Collins also out for the year. Just not a lot of talent on that side of the ball for the Giants. Obviously, Tennessee continues to fight for a uh, playoff spot here at 7-6. and six. Uh, They have certainly had their uh, sort of choppiness on the season as well. Back-to-back wins uh, for this team. Uh, especially impressive on a per-play basis. They outgained Jacksonville 3.6 yards per play. The New York Jets 2.6 uh, yards per play. Before that, uh, the schedule had been very difficult uh, for this Tennessee team. I mean, at Houston, at Indianapolis, uh, New England at home, at Dallas, and, of course, they played the Chargers uh, in London, Baltimore before that. That's about as tough as you could possibly be. Uh, for have any uh, for the the schedule of the Titans, this is still a team I think has been on the improve, especially from an offensive uh, perspective. Remember all the problems uh, they had at the quarterback position to start the campaign. So uh, to me, it's it was seem clear uh, the value in the clear right side. I think Tennessee gets the win here. Pretty telling uh, line move here, Aaron. It takes a lot to see an NFL team uh, go from uh, six and a half to uh, seven and a half, especially. When it involves a uh, a Jacksonville Jaguars team that is, you know, we talked about the the, the concept earlier, quote unquote, playing for exercise at uh, four and nine, no shot at the uh, postseason. But on the flip side, you got that Washington team that at one point last week, what were they down forty to nothing uh, to the uh, New York uh, Giants? But uh, yeah, Jags six and a half now, seven and a half. Uh, across the board here offshore, Aaron. Uh, low total thirty six. How do we approach this one? Well, it's certainly. Uh... <laughs> Uh, the onus lies on Washington, just absolutely miserable uh, at this point. It has been a debacle for this team. Everyone kind of had an idea uh, that the Redskins were a fraud, but they have completely fallen on hard times uh, at this point, dominated by the Giants last week, losing f- uh, down 40 to nothing. Um, the week before, it got beat by Philadelphia, Dallas, Houston, Tampa Bay, Atlanta. You look at the statistics uh, for these games, I mean, against Houston, out gained by 1.7 yards per play. Tampa Bay, 2.2 yards per play uh, in a win. Uh, Atlanta, 1.9 yards per play. Uh, it was bad, and it has only gotten worse. The quarterback position is a nightmare. Uh, Mark Sanchez, after um, McCoy was hurt, and obviously Alex Smith was hurt, uh, didn't last very long, looked absolutely terrible against Philadelphia, even worse against the New York Giants. So, uh, now they go to the fourth-string quarterback, and uh, although he looked all right in backup duty, it is just so hard uh, to do that in the NFL, especially against uh, what is at least a capable uh, Jacksonville defense. So uh, obviously uh, Josh Johnson has his work uh, c- uh, cut out for him uh, in this game as reflected in the spread. With that said, uh, you know, Andrew, certainly not uh, interested in running out lane seven and a half with this Jacksonville team that – Uh, has brought it at times very few uh, and seldom. Uh, In fact, uh, the one win against Indianapolis, they've been competitive uh, in some other games. Actually had a lot of uh, one-score games here of late till uh, they ran into Tennessee uh, last Thursday. But, um, you know, it's a team that I don't trust. Uh, Had, you know, basically a player too short of the Super Bowl last year. Uh, don't see much excitement from this franchise. I, uh, not really worth talking about. No interest in betting this game. I'm going to have to do some uh, database work on this uh, next one. What are teams, Aaron, coming off five straight losses straight up and against the spread? And in the sixth game, they're laying uh, double digits. That's the uh, profile here uh, for the Atlanta Falcons. They find themselves laying 10. There's some nine and a halves out there as they play host to Arizona, 44 the total. Uh, that's an interesting one. I'd have to be interested to run that and find that out. It might be the first time uh, in the history of mankind <laughs> that's happened uh, in the NFL, but Arizona, you know, it was interesting. I came in with the play on Detroit last week. It really wasn't uh, all that sexy in the box score as uh, they beat Arizona 17-3. to Arizona, to their credit, 
uh, actually outgained Detroit 0.5 yards per play. In fact, uh, the, you know, the previous week they had outgained the Packers by 1.3 yards per play. So it hasn't been maybe as bad uh, as it's looked at times uh, for Arizona. They've probably been a little bit more competitive. Uh, defensively, they've been all right. Uh, would actually probably lean to that side. It's so hard, uh, hard to trust that Arizona team. But Atlanta here, as you mentioned, five straight losses, uh, straight up and against the spread. Uh, they have not looked right uh, at all. The schedule has been very tough. I mean, uh, the last five weeks at Cleveland, Dallas, uh, New Orleans, Baltimore, uh, and Green Bay. But obviously, this is another team uh, with... Uh, Super Bowl aspirations, uh, you know, uh, obviously a couple years ago played in the Super Bowl against New England, blew that big lead. Uh, They get a little bit healthier uh, on the defensive side. The offense has been hit and miss. The run game has been vacant uh, essentially all season long. So I I did not play this one, but uh, if anything, I would lean uh, slightly towards uh, Arizona. Divisional game here. Seattle heads to uh, San Francisco. Seattle opened uh, six and a half. Uh, a lot of money here on the uh, 49ers. Now down to as low as uh, three and a half, couple of fours out there, Aaron. Seattle's sitting in a pretty good spot here uh, at uh, eight and five, but not uh, officially having, having uh, clinched a, uh, a postseason uh, berth being in that tougher uh, NFC. Uh, as mentioned, three and a half here for the uh, Seahawks, total of uh, 44. How do we approach this one? You know, again, you have to certainly account and understand the betting markets, and if you pay attention, uh, last week, San Francisco took a ton of money uh, against the uh, Denver Broncos. That game was extremely, I think it was like six to open the week at close three. That's a lot of money uh, to move in the NFL. And, you know, essentially, if San Francisco doesn't turn the ball over all the time and minus and turnover ratio all the time, uh, they've been a very competitive football team. In fact, uh, the last four weeks, or I'm sorry, uh, their last four games, you know, they last week they outgained Denver by 2.2 yards per play. Uh, the matchup against Seattle, they uh, were outgained uh, by 0.8 yards per play, but they actually outgained Seattle by 121 yards. And if you look at the box score of that one, is once again the turnovers that did them in. Even in fact, last week they beat Denver 20 to 14, uh, outgained them by 115 yards. As mentioned, 2.2 yards per play. Uh, they were still minus one in the turnover department. Uh, Tampa Bay, they outgained them by 0.1 yards per play on that Monday night game, even though, uh, I'm sorry, the following that Monday night game against the New York Giants, where they outgained the Giants by 0.4 yards per play. And remember, the Thursday to that previous, they dominated uh, the Oakland Raiders. So uh, it's been a somewhat competitive football team. In fact, a team that probably doesn't want to win uh, all that badly, uh, perhaps fighting for the number one draft pick, 3-10. and 10. Uh, straight up 4-9 against the spread, so it hasn't been very good. But uh, it's a team still trying hard. It's a well-coordinated, well-coached team. Meanwhile, Seattle, uh, boy, what a, you know, that that defense has been uh, pretty choppy uh, for Seattle. And, um, you know, if you go back uh, really the month of November, they allowed 25, 36, 24, and 27 points. Uh, The last two weeks, you know, they allowed a ton of yards even to San Francisco, And I was just like, wow, it's just still a tough defense to trust. And then, boy, all of a sudden, they just absolutely shut down uh, Minnesota last Monday night. If that defense continues to play that well, uh, look out for the Seattle. All the offense and Russell Wilson didn't do much. The passing game wasn't there uh, for this team. You can see the improvements, and they've been flying under the radar with that run game uh, in the improved offensive line. Now 8-3-2 against the spread. So interesting to see how... Uh, this one will play out from a value perspective. I, I just wasn't involved here, Andrew. I didn't see uh, any uh, any side or total uh, that I had put my money on for this one. Patriots in uh, Pittsburgh. What level of DEFCON are we at here with the uh, Steelers? They come in off of uh, three straight losses in the uh, markets, perhaps smelling a little bit of blood in the uh, water. New England opened a one. If you if you want uh, <clears throat> two and a half here with uh, New England, you better hustle because we're already starting to see three even monies. And uh, looks like it could be a widespread here by the uh, end of the uh, uh, evening here. Uh, total played up earlier today, Aaron, up to as high as 54. What are your thoughts? You know, last year they played about the same time. They played on December 17th. Of course, we all remember that game. I remember that game. Uh, vividly, uh, is it cost me uh, a lot uh, in the super contest, the super contest, gold, the contest out here 
uh, in the Westgate where uh, the Pittsburgh receiver seemingly uh, should have scored the touchdown there in the end, but they were called. I can't remember how it exactly went. I don't really want to remember. The call was reversed. It wasn't allowed. Uh, Big Ben throws that interception. Uh, later in that drive, perhaps on the next play, I can't remember, but it affected the total, it affected the side, uh, and uh, here we go again with a very similar total, a very similar point spread. Uh, last year, New England was 2.5-3 in that game. Uh, the total hover, hovered around uh, 52.5. Uh, New England off a loss uh, themselves. They lose 34-33 to on that miracle play uh, last week in Miami. I played, been playing New England over the total uh, to uh, uh, to burn in a lot of tickets. Uh, they had actually gone under the total in five straight games, but uh, that was an easy winner over the total last week against Miami. 34-33, to 33, I mean, to me, it's still uh, very much an explosive offense. We'll see that here against Pittsburgh. The Steelers, uh, yeah, three losses in a row, obviously 0-3 against the number. And, yes, the way they lose uh, last week against Oakland, Big Ben sits out four series, very curious with that. Uh, they had that big lead against the Chargers, self-destructed. They lose that game uh, going away on Sunday night football and, uh, you know, <laughs> looked very good against Denver and a three-point favorite. They lose 24-17. They actually outgained the Broncos by over 200 yards, 1.1 yards per play. Um, the You know, before that, they had played very good football, really, really good football. So we'll see if they can get back to that. And if they don't, boy, I'm not sure where this Pittsburgh season is going to go uh, from a side perspective. Um, not exactly sure where to go uh, in this game. But I do say, uh, I certainly do agree, uh, feel pretty good about the way that over moved uh, this morning. I think that's probably the right uh, the right way to play this game. Sunday night football looks like Wentz going to be out. He's got a, uh, what, a cracked vertebrae. That means uh, it's Nick Foles' time here for the Eagles as they head to uh, L.A. uh, Taking on the uh, Rams. Nothing but Rams money here, Aaron. Nine and a half. Uh, There was money on the uh, Rams prior to the announcement and then even more once he was officially uh, ruled out. Now up to 12 and a half. See a couple of 13s. 52 the total. Yeah, I'm not sure what time it is for this Philadelphia Eagles time. I'm pretty much sure it's not Super Bowl time for this team because uh, it's going to hard to duplicate, uh, have to win out, and probably some other things to go their way right now. Six and seven straight up, four and nine uh, against the spread. Remember, these two teams met in L.A. last year. Philadelphia won that game 43-35, to the game, ironically, that Wentz went down uh, with that knee injury. Uh, last week, they, the way they lost to Dallas uh, in overtime, really probably ending their season, uh, and then to come back out here against the Rams, I think you need to be concerned uh, that history could duplicate itself. Remember, uh, on November the 11th, uh, that Sunday night game against Dallas, uh, they lose that game 27-20 to the next week. They went down to New Orleans and absolutely got destroyed 48-7. to uh, That could be similar terrain here. Uh, they lose to Dallas last week in overtime, 29 to 23, outgained by 320 yards, 0.8 yards per play. It just hasn't been a very good Eagles team all season long. Uh, I would expect perhaps uh, the Rams sitting on one of their better performances of the season. Obviously embarrassed last week, only scoring six points against the Chicago Bears defense. Uh, that offense looked out of sync, did not look good. Back on their home turf. Uh, for the Rams that have not have wavered a little bit here uh, the last month or so, but we'll see if they can get back on track. Certainly a, a big penny to, to uh, lay here in double digits. Can't get too carried away, uh, but I would say some pretty grave concerns for this Philadelphia team. Monday Night Football divisional game. Carolina season essentially, Aaron, as they sit 6-7 uh, and seven playing host to New Orleans. Uh, Saints laying six, couple of six and a halves. This total's really been played down 54, down to 50 and a hook. Yeah, where this team, uh, you know, boy, six and seven straight up right now for Carolina. Things look so good not so long ago. Uh, here's another team that has lost five straight games straight up uh, and against the spread. Uh, four. They've actually played four of their last five. Uh, on the road, uh, and they come home, obviously, for this Monday night performance uh, against New Orleans. It, you know, it hasn't been that bad. If you look at the box scores for uh, Carolina and the yardage, it, it's been pretty good. 
you know, rumors right now that Cam Newton has a bad shoulder. If they lose this game, they probably shut him down uh, for the rest of the season. So it is, to a certain degree, the last one song here uh, for Carolina on the season. They have really struggled defensively against the pass, and that is certainly a concern against the New Orleans team. You know, the Saints have been funny because they have looked so good so often uh, this year, but you know, it's not like they've gone out and dominated the box scores in a lot of these games. That was on display last week in Tampa Bay. They win that game 28-14, to 14, but only outgain uh, the uh, Buccaneers by 19 yards, 0.3 yards per play. Right now, the Saints actually four straight games under uh, the total uh, as the defense has gotten better. I mean, look at those points allowed for this team, 14, 13, 17, 7, and 14. Uh, see how they do against a Carolina team. I would think a team uh, that should be able to game plan for uh, this week. So uh, from a side perspective, uh, very tough, not ready to lay it here uh, with New Orleans. think it could be a lower scoring game here on Monday Night Football. Great stuff here from uh, Aaron Rennie off a, a big week last week, four and one, including a uh, two unit uh, best bet uh, winner. And uh, you can get a part or be a part of uh, Aaron's best bet here for this weekend in that NFL uh, combo pack. All told, Aaron, uh, myself, Advantage Group, and Waz uh, with our NFL best bets on the year. Documented record 33 and 18, 65%. Get all four best bets here uh, for week 15, just 99 bucks. Also in play, uh, you got the bowl games, handicap your choice, full bowl coverage, 99 bucks, or get every best bet throughout the entire bowl season uh, for a 199. Again, uh, everything laid out for you on the uh, front page, betteriq.com. If you do have any questions, two ways to reach us, one 923 8867 or drop us an email, support at betteriq.com. Okay, that'll wrap up the uh, show and the uh, week. Enjoy your weekend, and the podcast will be back again on Monday.